fucking goddamn it. It's always something. Always goddamn something. <sighs> I have no idea if any of this is working. It's taken me a better part of an hour to get all this shit together. Fucking god damn it. Just so I can fucking ride to work. Greetings YouTube, it's my Kaylee 7 with a GoPro camera, starting mileage 28,137, all systems go, and look at me, riding my motorcycle again, I rode yesterday too, and I think another day last week, but uh, what I didn't do was record. Well, I did record on a couple of, at some point. Anyway, I've got like four videos I recorded and never put up because uh, ClipChamp was taken down by Microsoft something to do with their updating it or something so I don't know if it's back I'll try again and I can always use the DaVinci Resolve I can just download the, the free version of it start down the dark path <laughs> that's for road reality by the way <sighs> all right so I'll try this topic again I did this yesterday but the camera said it was an SD card error right as I got to work I think I'm gonna go there we are did I mention that I absolutely love this, uh, what do you call it? Motorcycle? Yeah. Okay, so let's start this topic again. I'll put up my windshield a bit because I know that the wind noise is going to be horrible. I think I'm going to go straight again today. I just don't like that curve in the morning. That curve where I hit an animal. See, this guy's taking a left. I'm going to go straight because Fanny Brown Road is nice. And I love that corner where I do 60, but last time I did it on the bike, I got hit by an animal, so no thanks. I got a little bit of damage to the bike, but nothing serious. The plastic covering where you can stick an extra light down by the engine, that came loose. And then the crash bar cover came loose. I just snapped them back in and I'm fine. So, yay for that. I think it was a cat that I hit, or that hit me. I went in for it, and all of a sudden it just came out of nowhere from the uh, from that side. Bam! Anyway. So the topic for today is um, mental decrepitude, I guess you could say. Now, there's a point in your life where you realize that your physical strength isn't what it used to be. That your recovery rate is worse than it used to be. And you'll never be as strong or as fast or recuperate as quickly as you did at some point in the past. And so that, that realization, is, uh, you know, it came over me starting in 2010 when I broke my leg. And so, that's not a big thing for me right now, because I've been dealing with the, you know, decreased physical ability for a long time now. 
But something happened to me the other day. I was uh, talking with a, a teacher that I do a performance evaluation of. I have eight of them. And I realized pretty quickly into it that uh, hang on a second I gotta make sure I don't die here okay where was I oh yeah so she's talking about uh, you know data analysis of data, resources, research that she's done, um, award ceremonies that she goes to, extra stuff that she does with the students like conversation partners and myriad other things. And her energy level and ambition and uh, knowledge, all of those things were such that I felt outclassed mentally and that's the first time that's happened in my profession where I've I've realized that it's not necessarily that you know an intelligence or IQ issue it's more of an age thing where you know the the younger brain with the younger energy level and the new ideas and such and the enthusiasm it's uh, it's interesting and daunting to see it from uh, the back nine of life when you see somebody having that and you don't have it and you know you don't have it you just no my brain is on the downslope my, my my whole life I guess you could say in a way is on the downslope I want to ease into retirement I don't want to take on new things big new things I don't want to grow my career my energy level is less, and my desire to do what I do uh, has kind of settled, I guess you could say. I still love what I do, helping students. And if I go back to teaching uh, instead of administering, then, you know, that'll be very nice. But I realized during that meeting that you know, the, the younger generation coming up, you know, people who are 20 years younger than I am, that energy level, I just don't have it. And, you know, in a apples to apples comparison, I'm gonna come up short. And uh, I think part of it is because of age, of course, but another part is experience. So, uh, and the other thing is culture too. Culture is another big one because the things that uh, were never problematic in the past suddenly become problematic for this new generation of American teachers and I dare say it's coming up very very quickly if not already with the students where the things that used to be you know funny or just normal are suddenly offensive So, uh, life is a series of lessons at this point. A less, the lesson being repeated over and over again is, you know, you don't fit. You don't fit. I, I probably could fit, I guess. I mean, I try. I don't disparage the new. I just have trouble understanding the new because it comes at me from angles I couldn't even anticipate. And, I, you know, it's still forming. This is all new kind of stuff with this gender identity thing. And then the social justice thing and the, the racism thing, the ende endemic, systemic, whatever, uh, institutional racism thing. All this stuff uh, in my field in higher education, it's, uh, it's new. I don't even think they know what they're doing yet. For example, I know of a case where one, one student, not at my school, but elsewhere, uh, chose to be male on some days and then chose to be female on other days. 
And when I mentioned this as part of the understanding I've developed about this gender fluidity thing, uh, this young person said, no, that's not a thing. Uh, and I didn't argue it because it's pointless, but it just shows that this person doesn't know the full scope of it either. You know, not going off too much on a tangent, but if if gender is a is a I mean, there there's sex, right? There's physical sex. You know, male, female, Y chromosome, X, da da da, testicles, vagina, and there are aberrations, of course, where you get hermaphrodites and such. I get that, but for the most part, you know, boys have you know this thing and girls have that thing, but. Um, that's not what gender is to them. Gender to them is, a, is an identity. It's a way of thinking about yourself. It's a way of wanting to talk, dress, uh, decorate yourself, think of yourself as. And if that's a, a, a mental concept, not a physical concept, and it's accepted by the, you know, that generation or the believers of that, that these things are uh, choices, and, and maybe not choices at the same time. Um, it opens it up. A person could be male some days and female some days in their head. I mean, I'm not going to go around saying, I'm a woman on Tuesdays and Thursdays, because that's just not me. But, uh, you know, there are people in the world now that have that, that believe that. Agree with it or disagree with it, it's a, it's a fact. That felt good. Anyway, I'm not saying I'm a big uh, fan of all the changes. It's confusing. Uh, but they are what they are. And, and so in the future, I will be irrelevant. People who have thoughts that are opposed to it are irrelevant to these younger folks. And that's the larger point. I don't know if you remember that Tex Avery cartoon they had years ago. It was a taxi cab gave birth, and it was a baby taxi cab, the son. And the guy comes in, the taxi cab comes into the room, and the kid's got on a, a new body. It's a, you know, a hot rod, and it's got an antenna with a little foxtail on it. And uh, the kid's zooming around the room, doing circles around the old taxi cab, and he's feeling totally outclassed, right? And that's kind of what it felt like in that meeting. I felt like, geez, you know, these young people are running circles around me mentally. It was daunting. Hey, a fellow rider. Look at me, rock star parking. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. All right. Well, hopefully this is a moto vlog I've just made. I'll summarize for you as I look at my mileage again. 28,144. Full tank of gas. Summary is, I feel like um, I've reached the peak of my mental ability and now I'm on the downslope. And I hope it's uh, not a slide into senility, at least not yet. I have one of the genes that causes that. Anyway, beautiful bike, beautiful Mike K the seven. I'll talk to you later.